What is up, you guys? And of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi Fi battle with yours, for, of course, the Scarinder. And today we're going up against the Hayden. And yeah, just gonna say straight off the bat, th this was something I was really excited about. We had this battle on Saturday, and I was actually debating whether or not I should have later uploaded this, would of course be in a 400 upload of Wi Fi battles. But since I am a one, roughly a month away from that, I feel that. Damn it! I might as well show you guys that this battle went because if anything, this is more so shits and giggles because Hayden is one of those players that just brings fun stuff, and uh, I decided to do somewhat the same, not bring in some meta heavy team, but more in depth with uh, trying to have fun, try to showcase weird stuff and see if it works. Now we are seeing the plethora of monsters, of course, Swallow, Jinx, and uh, Saucebuck, Bastiodon. Um, wheezing incredibly. I myself be using Choice of Bandit Detonate because what, why the hell not? Assault Vest, um, I do believe it's called Octillery. Uh, Hitmonchan, which is um, Leftovers, I assume, or something like that. Um, Heat Rock, uh, Lipard, Assault Vest, Gigalith, and Specs Executor. And yeah, just straight on at it. There are a lot of bulk here that my team just simply can't deal with, and knowing that is generally scary. And it's mostly due to that I can't necessarily outspeed him, I have to kind of just survive him. And being that Swallow basically sweep my team, uh, I need to keep my Gigalith at good health to be able to at least take a few hits and then hope I can take it down with me. Um, so with that said, let's see how this spell actually wins. So from the get-go here, I'm just going to start with my Bandit Detonate because I, it might actually be able to hurt something and I'm very lucky that he started with his Cradildo. Uh, so I can get a banned U-turn off, and I was a bit unsure whether or not I would hurt it a lot, I was hoping that I hurt it enough. And I can say like this, that's um, that's hardly worth bragging about, that is basically 24%, maybe at best. And being with leftovers and whatnot, that's not gonna work. I was hoping that we'd gonna go for leftovers, or I mean, <laughs> for stealth rocks, and uh, of course we're gonna show the leftovers here, there, there we go, now, now I'm at it, now I'm at it. And seeing that the Selvrock did came up, I'm free to go for Rapid Spin. Hitmonchan naturally, of course, uh, uh, forces out the Cradle Lead. But here's the thing. Weezing is going to be his number one call here. And I have nothing for Weezing when it comes to uh, my mods. So the only thing I have to switch into this that could actually kill it is Executor. And I cannot bring that in uh, in case it goes for a Sludge Bomb. There's no way. So Artillery or Voltes is my only mod going in here. And uh, I know I can force it out. And I'm really hoping that... If I force it out that I can go into my life part and knock off something because I am somewhat in a good position. Cradley is probably the only one he could bring in there which can go for uh, of course having Storm Brain to of course warping up or raising his special attack. So seeing that probably coming I was gonna actually just take that opportunity. I am kind of lucky though had it gone for a double willow or just attacked uh, this thing would have hurt me a lot. And um, I guess I'm somewhat lucky like that but at the same time I have such a weak team against this good balance team that I need to do those kind of plays to kind of get some momentum. So he goes back to Disco Balls, that's quite alright, and I go for that free knockoff. And uh, still, like that is not going to do a whole lot. So I'm going to go for U-turn and uh, basically decide what could be my possible best switching. But um, it's going to be every time I am um, Octillery because I have no other option than doing just so. And uh, I was thinking here that, alright, this time I'm probably going to go for a Skull. Not really taking into consideration that, of course, Jinx, by all sense and purposes, actually have uh, <laughs> dry skin. You know, you kind of forget about that. I don't face Jinx that often. So Frostitude's going to come in. I do go for a Skull, like I said. And the right now I'm basically a sitting duck. Um, if he goes for a Psychic or an Energy Ball, um, I'm not gonna survive it at the amount of HP I'm at it, but he, luckily for me, he goes for Lovely Kiss and miss it, of course, and I land a Flamethrower. So, yeah, we, um, we get it down to, of course, the plethora of health that is this monster, but like I said, I can't really do anything to it, so I'm hoping here that it goes for a Psy Shock or a Psychic, and I can take this opportunity to go into Bayonetta and basically wrap things up from there. So, yeah, I got the prediction right once again, and obviously that's extremely lucky. Like I said, had it gone for some kind of attacking move, that probably would have forced me down. So I go for a knockoff yet again, and um, yeah, we're, we're still not hurting this thing. But it, it's down for the count. It doesn't really have a lot of HP, so we can use that to our advantage. And the only thing I can do here is actually second off my auxiliary and get a free switch into Executor, which of course, with max speed, should be more than capable 
of uh, outspeeding at least the wheezing even without the sun. Uh, now Sludge Bomb doesn't take us out, which is um, all right. You know, I can do that. I can I can live with that. But at the same time, the burn will take us out. So uh, wheezing got his kill there, and I'm gonna bring Brigant and basically go for that spec psychic. Now he'll switch out to Cradley, and. Um, yeah, basically, I thought it would bring in Jinx here to this position. He does not do that, and this spec psychic will outright destroy this cradle. It, it doesn't really take it that well, and um, he basically gonna sack it here. And you know, I get that. Like I said, I was pretty sure we'd go to Jinx here, and I would be a sitting duck. But instead, we get cradle out of the way, which is an extremely um, tough mom for me to actually deal with. So he's gonna go to Twitter, and um, yeah, I got nothing for this. Like I stated before the game, um, Swallow does sweep our team uh, since I speed everything and hurts everything really well. So Vulcan is going to be my number one call and he basically going to go for Protect, which I guess is fine. Uh, was really a bit unsure whether or not uh, he should have gone for U-turn or whatnot. But he does this this time instead. Um, the reason I say that is because he kind of kind of weird to, um, to risking that poison that early since he's going to be forced to switch that out in and out from time to time. But you know, it works, it works. I do get why I wanted to speed or attack boost too. So I'm just going to go for Rock Blast to get into Frost 2 that way. And um, yeah, we're looking a bit solid now. We're actually getting away those heavy hitters. And uh, he's going to bring his um, Soul Spark here. And here's where I have to make a call. Uh, luckily for me, he goes for Sword Stance. I did go for Super Power myself. But the thing is here, I am at risk here of him setting up or that he attacks. If he attacks me, then I can't take a hit from Swallow. But if I switch out and go to a sword stance, then I am in trouble. Like, um, there is not necessarily a mon on my team that can outspeed outside of Dedene. And even a bandit Uter, as you guys saw on Cradley, just doesn't really do a whole lot. So I was I was basically forced to switch out. So yeah, here comes the Bastion on, and I really have nothing for it. I really don't. And luckily for me, it goes for Crunch, because I was basically sacking the Dedene here. And I think a waterfall basically kills us. So a bit surprised it went for Crunch. And obviously, we are now in a fine position where we can spam that Flame Charge. And I say spam or Flame Charge, Wild Charge, because uh, he doesn't have anything that can take this hit. And what do you know, it doesn't really do a whole lot. It's actually it's tickling the Weezing, but it's tickling the Weezing enough for it to fall. But goddamn, this detonate just worthless, but I love it anyway, because it's such a dumb set. <laughs> So anyway, he's going to bring Squitter here, and like I said, we can't outspeed it. I'm slowly accepting that I can't outspeed it. So he goes for the facade, obviously that will take us out. And um, the only option I have here now is hoping for him to switch out in some fashion. And I think the only way I can do that is by bringing Bayonetta, go for Heat. Um, sorry, going for, of course, Sunny Day. And basically hope that he kills me with, um, with a U-turn or a facade. Uh, but I, I really, really am hoping it goes for a U-turn, and I'm extremely lucky that it does that. And the reason I say that is because I needed the sun up to make sure that Waterfall doesn't necessarily kill my Gigalith. But at the same time, uh, since it's switching out, that means that we get an opening for our Executor. And um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that basically means I can spam Solar Beam at this point. Obviously, it's resistant to Swallow, but Swallow is not taking a spec Solar Beam. And what do you know? A modest max P does not outspeed a Swallow. I'm saying that as a statement of what the fuck. But yeah, that's actually true. So, Twitter's gonna come back in here, of course, being his last Mon. And um, yeah, like I said, there's really nothing we can do. We obviously are not outspeeding. So, um, Brigand is gonna fall here, though he will get a nasty recall after this and it comes naturally would be an extremely high HP so yeah that basically is 50% on the swallows I was like what but yeah that works obviously that really really forces him down so I'm gonna bring Hitmonchan here because in case I am not taking the facade that well uh, hopefully the toxic will take him out so that that was my initial thought at least so it goes for Brave Bird that of course is gonna kill the Hitmonchan and the recall is insane on the swallow together with toxic just racking up really but, um, what do you know? <laughs> he will survive. And that means that I really have to trust Gigalip to pull through here. And, um, he's gonna go for, of course, the facade, which is his strongest move. And it will do a hell of a lot of damage. Like I initially said there, that's easily, basically 33%. 
So knowing that in mind, while I do survive it and we'll wrap up the game, there are situations here that Hayden actually misses out on that probably would have changed the outcome of this game, and actually a whole lot actually. Um, of course I'm gonna go through them for you guys. So yeah, some thoughts here about the game itself. Um, I actually find out that, or rather, had Hayden just played safe, he probably would have won this game actually, because his stamina alone from the matchup is well more than capable of forcing me out and eventually winning the matchup basically by just doing damage. Uh, I think he kind of choked, um, not not necessarily playing badly, not at all, but rather not seeing the whole situation and kind of got the ship damage on monster didn't need it. Um, take for example uh, when I had my Executor in against the Weezing, uh, sacking, Cradley, or not really sacking, but for coming to that situation where Cradley could not take two psychics uh, instead of sacking Jinx was probably a tough call to make. The same thing goes with, of course, Sauce Spot going for Sword Stance and instead of attacking uh, my Gigalith. Had I attacked the Gigalith, I'm probably not been able to take enough Assad. Um, while he would have lost his um, Sauce Spot, that would have been. Uh, it still wouldn't matter because, like I said, Swallow does break apart my team. Uh, if, uh, of course, my Gigalith is gone. So I think he kind of. He missed that opportunity, but I know what he went through. Had I switched out against the Sauce Bug, I would have lost there too because I would have no mod that can take that hit. No, no way, really. Uh, and I think the last mistake, because I still got the game until very late actually, but going for a U turn against my life for was probably what sealed his faith because um, had he gone for a facade against Lightport, he would have taken that one out. Uh, since I can't paralyze it, obviously, with the course Thunder Wave and whatnot, um, since it was poisoned and um, yeah like I said the Bastiodon that was his second monitor did eventually lose there uh, he could have that mon could have swept through my team basically and so I, th I think he choked I think he had the game there uh, he just didn't see the given situation and I think that's why he lose uh, the, the team is using is the right one it definitely naturally wins against my team I was just a bit lucky here and did a few Lucky Shard and Darts that definitely paid off, and then basically I was hoping to get something out of this. So, um, Hayden, from the bottom of my heart, if anything, you know, GG and whatnot, and it was extremely fun going up against you. Um, I mean, I've been following or looking at your battles for like three years and always enjoyed your constants. So, going up against these legendary mods like Cradillo, Frostitude, Disco Balls, it was awesome. I had a blast, really. And, you know, it came down pretty darn close anyway. Um, I, I definitely didn't think I would have a shot here with that team, but obviously luck is a factor and you know it it's not always as easy of doing the right call when you need to and definitely we don't we have your massive team for momentum and it doesn't come so you know with all that said I like I said I had a blast I thought it was a really really fun game and uh, yeah looking forward to seeing more content from you in the future I, I really do uh, and for everybody who's been watching you know I, I should say, you know, watch Hayden channel, but hell, if you watch Hayden or watch me, then you definitely already watch Hayden because he's an incredible battler, an incredible pocket tuber. And, um, yeah, <laughs> you know, with that said, I really can't thank him more than more than enough for um, giving me, of course, this, um, this channel of challenging him because, um, I don't know, it, it feels... It feels like you're battling like something, someone that you look up to, uh, and that feels empowering by any fashion, really. So uh, yeah, basically four minutes of me rambling. Yeah, I, I don't really know how to end this video. I want to thank, like I said, Hayden for this. It's it's a great opportunity to, or it was fun, not being so serious all the time. I feel that that's something I need to kind of find my way back to. Um, so with that said, I want to thank you, of course, everybody for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you like this video. And um, yeah, i see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye.